This video just kind of shows how I made a batch of ash stakes for my garden. Um, I had these logs I took down last year. They've been laying there waiting to be cut up. And uh, this one here is about, I think it's about 11 and a half foot long. So I um, decided I was going to cut it into two pieces to make some stakes. And uh, I started trying to square up the end on it. Realized that the last time I used the saw, I cut into the dirt and it was pretty darn dull. So um, I had to go file it a little bit to get it to cut decent. And um, I just kind of squared up the end of the log. And then um, I decided I was going to make some six foot stakes that are an inch and a half square. And then I was going to make five and a half foot stakes that are about an inch and a quarter square. So I decide to cut it down, you know, cut it in the middle and, um, you know, work with the two pieces a different length. may not be the easiest or the best way to do it, but, you know, that's what I decided to do. So I got the, uh, log cut into the two pieces and the larger bottom part of the tree here I'm doing first and that's, uh, cut to six foot long for the longer stakes. Um... I decided I needed some uh, inch, I wanted to use some inch and a half stakes again because uh, my existing stakes that I had were made out of pop or cottonwood and they were inch and a half and last year the wind actually started breaking them off so I'm hoping that this ash will be a little bit stronger. So I got the um, first half of the log loaded on my little tractor there and you know this is kind of, with the size of that it's um, I think it's about 19 inches on the big end there. It's uh, getting up to the limits of the tractor. And then I had to move my tow board because I'm um, going from cutting the longer cherry boards that I cut first to, you know, cutting something that's a little bit shorter. So I needed a different position. And then I had to put another, um, you see, I just threw that slab against the back stops there because the, um, the log is shorter than the distance between them, so it could roll off if I didn't put that there. So, you know, basically, um, like I said before, I'm using these uh, little forks on my loader a lot more lately, and it makes it a lot easier for, you know, just uh, loading logs on the mill and, and moving stuff around, so they are real handy to have. So this, you know, is basically just getting a log on the mill um, showing you my uh, poor skills of uh, parallel parking I guess <laughs> I take the, uh, the ten, 10 different moves to uh, turn it 90 degrees yeah I still got a couple more logs sitting there I have to figure out what I want to cut them into but you know I, I needed these stakes right away so that's what I'm working on now. So, um, you know, I get the, the log moved over, get it on the mill, and you can see it's got a big crack in the bottom of it from where I, uh, I fell, when I felled it, and, um, so I just kind of made sure that that was horizontal, and then I putting these uh, brackets on that Hudson gives you for logs that won't fit between the dogs. And you can see how I use the uh, impact driver and those uh, garage door mounting screws that I showed you before. And then I got to jack up the one end uh, with the tow board. Get it because it's a little bit narrower on the one end and I want to try to keep the grain as straight as I can on these stakes so that they don't break too easily. So I get the, um, you know, I get that pith lined up pretty much parallel to the saw bunks and put a couple more of those screws in the other bracket. And there it is, logs all mounted on there. And you can see there's some strange twist in the bark there, so, it's, you know, it's still going to have some stress in it. But, um, you know, once I got it on there, I just started whittling away at it, which I normally do, and, um, I'm just trying to, um, right now I'm trying to cut it down to one and a half inch thick planks and get as many as I can out of it, um, you know, to get as many stakes as I can. So basically I'm just, uh, just kind of slabbing it at the, um, one and a half inch thick dimension there. 
and then later I'll go back and I'll cut them in the other dimension. Now you can see uh, when I was doing those small cherry boards, the mill was real, you know, rock solid. And, um, you'll notice in this video that, you know, dealing with this large ash log that's been laying around and it's fairly dry, um, there is a little bit of rocking again. I'm starting to, you know, get up to the limits of this little mill. But, um, you know, it does cut it nice, and uh, uh, luckily the log looks to be pretty much clear all the way through, so I won't, you know, have too many areas where I'll have uh, weakened stakes from knots and stuff like that. So, you know, here it is. I'm taking just a couple of slices off the top there just to um, try to make it so that I can... Uh, you know, flip it over or turn it sideways and uh, start cutting without using those um, screw-on brackets. I want to, you know, be able to get it clamped into dogs next. So you can see, you know, there is a little bit of, little bit of rock, a little bit of um, play in the thing, but, you know, it actually does cut good, so I'm not really, you know, worried about it. So there I've taken a couple slices off of it. And, you know, now what I've got to do is just start turning it. And this is where the, uh, those log rights really come in handy. Um, the only other thing that would be helpful would be to have somebody else around to help you uh, when you're doing this. Because it's just, it's just trying, you know, it's like trying to balance this thing up on its side there and get it clamped into dogs. And um, it can take a take a while to do it when you're doing it alone and just kind of struggling from end to end but you know eventually I got it and um the dogs are easy to to clamp once you get it and oh, well there it is I almost got it now I pretty much got it and you know once you get it standing up on end and clamped in one dog the other one's pretty easy and this is where you just kind of have to watch out that you don't um start cutting metal with your saw blade also so there I had to, I had to just kind of level it up a little bit more there with the um, jack, and uh, now it's just back to you know starting to take the cut off of here just to try to get a another flat spot. And um, you know that once I get it down to be narrow enough where it will just lay on the bunks and um, use the uh, the little hold downs to keep it from moving, I'll be good. Yep, so so there it is. Now it's cut down narrow enough that, um, you know, it'll lay right on the bunks. Uh, it's kind of a short length, though, so it's kind of a um, little bit of a pain to cut because uh, either either one end or the other is going to move because it's um, it's hanging off half of the, uh, the space of these little locators that hold it from slipping. So if you go slow, it you know, no real problem, but this is just, you know, whittling it down a little bit more and cutting everything to the uh, one and a half inch thick planks that will later be cut to the um, inch and a half square stakes. Yeah, it's amazing just, you know, how handy this little mill is. Um, it's, uh... It allows you to, um, you know, just about come up with any dimension of wood that you want pretty easily. And there you can see where that crack is. And I pretty much uh, split the crack with the um, board, so I'll, I won't lose too much. I'll, I'll have to cut a foot off a couple of the stakes, but, um, you know, that won't be too bad. Then I get down to the, uh, the last cut and... Actually, I got one one and a half inch board there, and then I got you know just about a three quarter inch board that I'm going to have left over that I'm uh, just going to turn into a one and a half by three quarter stakes. So once they're all sliced up, all they do is I stand them up in the on the mill and just start cutting the um, the squares away. Makes it a little bit easier to, you know, to do it on the mill and not try to rip them down on the table saw or anything because you can do them six, eight, you know, at a time here. So, um, just kind of, you know, it takes a little while to, to go through and do them, but, um, not like it's hard work or anything when you're at this point. Everything is pretty light. Yeah, 
and that, that little digital gauge that um, I have on the, uh, the for reading the amount that you move it that really uh, helps me to um, you know just easily offset uh, I'm going offsetting about uh, 1.56 inches to make up for the thickness of the band and um, you know it's real easy to get the number sometimes it's hard to hit it though because that little hand crank uh, does have a a little bit of movement between the lock points on it so that can take a little bit of fiddling and backing off and redoing it and stuff till you get it where you want but you know this is basically you know just just cutting it up into the uh, the squares now and luckily like I said it was a real nice you know pretty much clear log so um, Pretty much all the stakes are going to be good. I don't. I won't have uh, too many wasted pieces. Um, some of them I'll have to cut down a little bit just to get the bad spots off the end. But it's just a matter of you know, just keep on moving down and cutting, cutting an inch and a half, and uh, pretty soon I have the. Uh, the first batch of steaks all completed. Then I've got a couple more, you know, a couple more boards that wouldn't fit on with the first slice, so it's just a matter of going back, standing them up, and slicing them down next. So there it is. There's the uh, six foot by one and a half st square stakes, first batch of them. And then now I'm just going to go through and load on the other five and a half foot long log to uh, make the the thinner ones, which um, these will be about one and a quarter inch square. So it's going to be, you know, kind of like the same thing repeated over again. Um, that's basically what a sawmill is. You just keep, you know, doing the same thing, loading and cutting and loading and cutting. But, um, so it's, luckily this one I was able to, you know, just barely grab with the dogs. Um, didn't have too good a grip on it, but I didn't have to use the brackets on the end. It was small enough that I could uh, get around it. So that made this one be a little bit easier. And you can you can see this lot is a little bit smaller, and um, you know the mill's having a little bit easier time with it. Also, uh, you know it's a matter of just whittling it down and uh, trying to get some flat sides on it. And um, that log right can hook uh, really is a handy thing to have around a mill. Someday I'm going to get a shorter one, one of the little mill special ones. Um, but uh, that really is like, you know, having a couple extra people around to help you. So I'm just going to keep, uh, you know, rotating it and, and cutting and um, until I get a uh, batch of inch and a quarter thick boards this time. Now I've uh, I've just noticed that um, you know basically I've got some uh, my cuts are starting to get some waves in them and uh, I put a new blade on this before I started cutting that cherry this morning and um, I never retorqued it I should have retorqued it you know after about half an hour or so and so I had to go back there and um, you know just retorque the blade to uh, help get straight cuts again. The um, blade tension on these little mills is, you know, it's real critical to um, to keep them tensioned properly to get the best cut. And then, you know, the same thing with this one. I cut it to one and a quarter inch thick boards. And now I'm just going back and I'm slicing them down to the, uh, turn them into the squares. Uh, 
So there I have my batch of the um, the inch and a quarter ones now. So uh, basically uh, done with the mill for the day. So you have to release the tension on the blade once you're done. Uh, you don't want to leave the tension on the mill when you store it. And just fold it up and put it away. And now I'm just going to move these blanks around to my workshop. And uh, starting with the uh, inch and a quarter ones first. And I've got the... Uh, that uh, lumberjack tenyon cutter, uh, or actually point stake pointer, um, set up with the thicker washers to start out with to uh, give it a little bit finer cut. And I'm noticing actually that um, the other day when I did the video about testing it, it um, it seemed to cut slower. And using this fresh cut um, wet wood, the thing cuts kind of probably about six times as fast and it just kind of cuts it like butter and it um cuts it clean it doesn't really tear it out or anything so um it's it's really a lot easier job than i thought by doing these when they're you know fresh cut and wet so i got it set up on a on just a you know a little table with a vise on it that's a little more steady than what i had the other day and i could put a little more pressure on it too to to, um, you know get it to cut a little faster and um, with this wet wood I'm getting these really cool uh, pieces of uh, veneer off of them almost uh, here you can see what they look like they're uh, just coming off like a veneer and they're really pretty um, so this didn't you know I think it took me maybe about a half an hour to go through and, and get this batch of steaks actually it took maybe about 45 minutes to go through and um, get this first batch of the smaller steaks done and uh, you know I got I started getting pretty good so I could get everything aligned pretty straight and everything but um, I could see that you know in the future if I make a make a machine to use this it's gonna be really super easy to put points on steaks um, thing does a really great job I'm real happy with it and it does make a lot of sawdust, but you know, there's the first batch of the inch and a quarter ones. Then I moved into inch and a half stock and um, started messing with that. Now I decided to go back to the thin washers uh, for the inch and a half ones to try to make them cut a little bit quicker. And uh, you can see that actually, once I did that, this thing just it cuts like an animal, it just uh, goes right through and you know, cuts beautiful. But um, I still got it's like offset. You can see a little offset in the blades there, and the one in the back there has the uh, the the actual thin washers on both of them. And then the one in the front there, I switched one set of the washers out to be the thicker ones to try to get better alignment, and um, I got the point a little bit more even. I think I really have a problem with the thickness of the washers. I have to find something that's a little bit more precision to work with and, you know, not just stuff from tractor supply. But um, basically the way I've got it set, set now and um, with the uh, these bigger stakes, it's really just, uh, it's actually just ripping right through them and it's doing a beautiful job on them. Um, so, you know, it's I'm, I'm real happy with the way it's working. So this, you know, this took maybe about another 45 minutes to go through this batch, and by the time I got done, I I was pretty close to 200 stakes, having 200 stakes total. So you know, I should be set for a while now. And once you once you get used to it, it's a little easier to get everything aligned and get you know get things straighter, and um, it takes a little while to get used to it, but it is a really nice tool. So now I went to the, um, these are the little rectangular ones that are inch and a half by about three quarters. And um, you can see the tool does a real excellent job on them also. So, it, you know, it doesn't really matter the shape or anything else. But you do wind up with a lot of chips that I really didn't want to toss out. So um, what I did is I got some old onion bags and I just stuffed them in there and packed them in there. And I'm going to take them out and let them sit in my garage till next fall. And then I'm just going to use them for a fire starter for my wood stove. 
So, you know, this is basically from tree from the backyard turned into some steaks that I, you know, thought I'd share with you. And, um, you know, I'm real happy the way this, uh, this steak pointer worked out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.